Welcome everybody to this week's Challenge of Doom. Yes, we have the secondary a branding here tonight as we are called the Challenge of Doom. Hopefully everyone's having a good night, having a good day. Uh, joining me tonight is Mike Pianca. Mike, uh, did I screw up your name? I, I, I no, no, okay. Pianca. I, didn't, I was just making sure I didn't Alex, Alex Cook you, where I keep calling him Alex Coach. <laughs> and I, no problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping Alex is in chat right now as I'm, I'm saying that. So maybe he is, maybe he isn't. So we're getting, we're, we usually jump right into the games, but we got a moment here. Uh, we were we were talking a little bit about your experience with EUIC. How do you want and and Orlando? Uh, anything you want to share with our chat? Like uh, set stuff up. So. Orlando was great. Probably one of the better venues that I've been to. Um, really easy to get to. Um, you know, they had doors that were pretty close that you could walk in and out of if you need to go outside for some air. Now, for EYC, was pretty disappointed in the venue, um, just the way that they had set it up. Uh, they had ended up putting the Pokemon Center um, at the beginning of the building to make it an extremely long walk to get into the venue through metal detectors. On top of that, you had to exit the venue area to go use the restrooms and then walk back through security, which kind of was a little disappointing. So there was a lot of walking between day one and day two. Um, but they could have had more than three vendors, which was a little odd. So if you wanted to go see stuff of the vendors, sell stuff, it was just a little rough. Yeah, which does sound like which the game is already moving, but that's what we do with the challenge of doing. We move pretty fast, we talk pretty fast, we do a lot of, uh, do a lot of things fast, I guess is the way to say it. Because I was gonna talk real quick about the metagame, I'll keep it up. Uh Charizard Pidget still number one, but uh Future Hands and Lugia seeing a nice uptick tonight. Any any thoughts on why why we're seeing that? It's still a lot of variety. Um, I thought it would narrow down a little bit more, but I think people are still testing the waters in the meta. Um, I think Gardevoir is going to have an uptick for sure, especially with like the recent showings at EUIC and Orlando. Um, the deck still has it, and it fits pretty well into the meta. Um, Charizard, I feel, should be going up, honestly. I at least... From the latter, felt like I've been playing more uh, Charizards lately, and it makes me like just even talking about that. It makes me feel like which versions we have technically three versions of it now out there. We have Prime Catcher, which seems to be the one doing well. We have Mighty Cape, which not seen as much, and then the Belt version. Um, yeah, I think I think Double Belt. And cape is probably the easiest way to go with it. You know, giving up two prizes, you don't ever want to do that with this with this deck at all. So yeah, which I I've seen with the cape one. They, a lot of times they end up using it is to protect the um, digit from ever being picked off throughout the, game, or at least not easily picked off. Oh, with the cave, the belt version use that to go pick off the pidget when they take two prizes. Which I, I prefer. I mean, if you can control their board, get rid of the pidgeot, and then if they're not running miss energy, I mean, you can really punish them with one Devo. I've not been playing the Devo, and I just I, I'm playing more of the Orlando winning style list as our cloth player is having an absolute horrible start here. Um. I've been playing that version more, but like the Miss Synergy is just so good, especially if you think they're playing the D. So at uh, EUIC, the Miss Synergy ended up saving me against that uh, that Moon player. I forget his name, but I I two owed him. Um, I ended up getting a search it at the end. Um, I let him take two with one Moon prior, so I could knock it out with a Charmander because I did have the. Um, I did have lost back at the time and then saved it to a nice Iono and I left him with one Dunsparce on the field um, with a one card hand. So he'd go to five. So it was like really doubting he could pull much off because I only had the one Zard on board with the missed energy um, and then a one prizer and he needed to take two prizes. So uh, 
I had ended up uh, turrowing my Pidgeot at the end there just to make sure that he couldn't get around it. And I think he did have boss. So, I mean, it worked out. Yeah, it does. I personally, I do not have all the, the cards yet for the, the new Rory Moon style deck. I feel like wa- watching people play it and everything, like, I feel like it's a good deck, but it's a hard deck to YOLO. Put it one way. Like, yeah, yeah, I would, def- I would definitely say, like, you can't YOLO with that. I actually was prepared for the match because of the regional of Doom. I played, I forget who it was, one of the other um, people who've come on and cast before, um, Pizza or something like that. I forget the name. I know, um, I know Girl Gamer Law. Yes, Girl Gamer played it. I played her in round eight. I think seven or eight. I think we actually we had that on on stream. Did yeah, we? yeah. I think we had you play it, and we watched, or she played it, and you just ended up being on stream. Yeah, game one, I was figuring it out, and uh, it was kind of like, whoa, they are drawing a lot of cards. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way I could deal with this, so I had to play really tight with it and hold like vac and uh make sure getting rid of like the uh artisans um so they couldn't just keep going so i had to get rid of like early artisans it's actually interesting how strong lost vacuum is against that deck because you can you can nerf their numbers like they need those those uh tools to go into the discard you knock them off with a lost vacuum they're not getting that 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 stuff back yeah especially leaving a single prize board state and making them want to take the first prize, they pretty much seal their loss when you make them take the first prize. All right. So it's an interesting deck. I think people should definitely be playing it, but I don't think anything else will happen with it. Oh man, we got someone. It really can't evolve much. Yeah, it's it's where it's going to be. Like, do you, like if you ever remember playing against like Lost March or uh, Mad Party or even Night March. Like they want to do certain things, and that's what they do well, and that's all they've done. Trick pony decks. So I mean, this is pretty interesting. Hidjot instead of the barrel line. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I was just glad to see, like, Bennett, Bennett, Gardevoir going. Like, this is, like, fun deck to have. Um, so I feel like I want to have more cards and see more cards because you have turns where you want, you know, another energy on top of playing. I, I mean, yeah, it's just more cards. <laughs> Seems better in this version. I wouldn't hate to see it to Dunsparce, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring this up real quick. Judging call thing. If your opponent presses like loss and you're still playing, I will reset the game. But I do ask that you take a screenshot of your win. Just okay. Oh, now you can see. Okay. Just so, so we, if any, anything comes up. So, um, yeah, their hand is small. Oh, they're coming in with the, the scrim tell. What would you hit with the scrim tell? You're hitting 160. I mean, I would definitely take out the sneezler for sure. Easiest, easiest thing to hit, right? Yeah, and it's the biggest hindrance um, for damage wise. I mean, doing um, electrodes really not doing much anymore. I mean, what kind of damage pump can you really get? There's not really anything in the format. Yeah, I think Quaff is... <laughs> is Charizard, just for, like, you know, 
two hundred damage towards a Charizard or knocking out a moon. Like my my brother loved Link Claw. It was one of his favorite decks, and as soon as rotation hit, he gave it up. He was just like, you know, it's it's done. I mean cloth itself, I mean it's it's not a bad one prizer, but so requires the energy versus not with the electrode. So may, maybe we'll see what happens. Like they're playing the Roseanne's back up. They are just straight attacking with the pigeon. That's still only a hundred damage per turn. I mean, compared with, I mean, it can soak a decent, like, it can soak two hits. So it's really not that bad, especially if they were just going to continue with the Bennett line. Oh, okay. All right, we got Bidoof and Pidgeot. Okay. They're taking, they're taking a little bit of the, uh, the Tord list, Charizard list, and just replacing Charizard with, uh, Cloth, cloth and uh, Electrode. Which, I mean, the Electrode still, if you can get the damage on it, but the, the loss of Spicy Curry. Which was weird. Wasn't it, like, in the Brilliant Stars, but it was it was just, like, the, it was the wrong, not wrong, but it was, like, a different, different set rotation thing to it? Brilliant Stars had E and F in it. Okay. Because I remember right, we talked about it previously, it was like a promo card in Japan. It was at a different time than it was. So by the time it came here, we were still we're still aligning with it. It just came here late. I think it's just when they ended up combining sets just to give us stuff. They uh, did some inclusions. Yeah, it's what what we get and what we don't with certain things is always just weird. And I just I just go okay and move on. Most of the time. Was it, uh, I think, spongy gloves or whatever it was? The water ones were also in Brilliant Stars and those were E? Yeah. Actually, I'm looking it up. Like, super effective glasses wasn't. Uh, no, there was no gloves in, in Brilliant. No gloves? Okay. But we got stuff like, but we got, like, the Altar Guard of War in it, but that was previous. I mean, the fact that we sold that carnivore. I feel like the Bennett line kind of takes away from like the Gardevoir strat. I think it's really necessary. That is true. Like to to, to me, the Bennett is what matchups are you even using the Bennett for? Tn. That's about it. Get the get set up before. I mean, if, you, if if you can get an early Shuppet flip. Same as in uh, Espathra. Then you might be able to control the game, but then you can still set up a Charmeleon, especially now that, you know, uh, what was it? Luke and Liam both played two Charmeleon. I like I like the two Charmeleon myself. I do, yeah. Oh, getting rid of the, the Pidgeot. And that was something I was playing back when I was playing more just straight Viborel. This is the double double Charmeleon, and that always seemed to work very well. But that was also benefiting from using you're trying to use TM Evolution, and you weren't trying to use Candies. You're trying things different. Yeah, especially like we were talking before. I mean, I I feel like a one off TM Evolution would be okay with a one one bib line and a two uh, a four two. Charmeleon, I think it'd be still fine and give you a little bit more wiggle room. Um, if you don't want to put out your Cleffa and just need an attack off, you're not wanting to actually use Pidgeot's attack. Or, I mean, most of the time you do want to use the Charmander for 30 damage. You don't know how many times, especially in the mirror match, that you're like, all right, let me send up a Charmander and hit for 30. I mean, it just fixes so much math. That's what actually helped me in a uh, matchup today. I was playing Charizard Mirror. I went up and I just, I was hoping they didn't have boss for game. I retreated into a Charmander 
and hit for 30. Two prizes left. They had two prizes, they had two prizes, but they got like the last hit. So I had a damaged, damaged Charizard on the bench. I had that, and then I had another Charmander sub. So I'm just praying. They hit me with Roxanne and not Boss. I'm like, oh, cool. And then they don't KO the active. Yeah. I, I mean, like, good, I, good game I, there. Yeah, as, I, soon as, as soon as you see them play that supporter, you're just like, whew. whew. I'm like, I have the Vibrail set up, I have the Pidgeot, everything else. I was like, oh, yeah, no. Done. I, that 30 damage became so crucial at the end of the game. And if you took a look at the Champions League this weekend, um, the 1 1 Barrel line has already made it from last week, well, two weeks, uh, one and a half weeks ago with Tord, um, to them running the 1 1 Bib line, especially with uh, the increase. They had the new unfair stamp, which. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the Charizard players are playing, which the Bavero line I could see got one person right back into the game. Um, didn't really affect them. So I think it's going to be a thing going forward. Everybody's going to run the 1 1 bib line. The 1 1 bib line is just too good. As we're actually seeing the Gardevoir player here kind of struggle a little bit. Yeah, I mean, running into the Shuppets when they. Uh, did like the earlier Iono instead of like other attackers that would be more viable, like the uh, Drifloons and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not liking the Shuppet line in here. If they can get an easy KO here, I'm actually surprised they're not going in with the, the Gardevoir as a straight attacker. It'd be a safe, safe bet. Like, I, I'd always found that, at least playing against Klopp, like, your best attacker was your Gardevoir. Because they have, they have like, no way of one-hit KOing it, and you usually get a two-prizer and more off of it. I mean, they need to take two prizes this turn, or else it's just done. Ryzen, we're seeing the cloth do well here. And that. Oh, why are you putting the energy back in the deck? I don't know either. I get why not benching the Mew, but you're also having the issue that the Bennett is just as weak. I could have seen maybe two energy just so you could draw one with Gardevoir. But it still didn't matter if you put 60 damage on the Gardevoir. Yeah. Um, you should have maybe put the uh, Screamtail back in. And it's at least take away the one attacker and not leave a two prizer in the active. Yes, Cash. It, we have gone back in time, and now we are playing. We're watching Cloth again. Um, there's the boss. That's what we're afraid of. No, can't. Uh, they don't really have... If they, if, they, if they get a cloth down and they're able to poison the Bennett, oh. that'll be... Yeah, that would be enough damage if they get a cloth energy and poison on the Bennett. See, Iono's not going to be effective. Iono's going to just hurt you more than anything. Hmm. Okay. Like, how do you win? What is Gardevoir's win condition? I would have not probably played the boss there. I mean, if you just attack the Gardevoir you force and then me. held the boss for the next turn. Yeah. That, that even going back to like talking about Charizard, like two bosses, I've been playing that kind of list, feels like too little. Oh, I've, I've tried so, so hard to put three boss in. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It's just what it is. Like, gusting effects are just so strong, right? Now. And we even 
have a better item version of one. Which I mean, some people will be like, oh, that, that's what that that's what the uh, um prime cash are supposed to be, right? But I'm like, eh, sometimes I just want a regular old boss. I mean, I'm not opposed to you playing three boss, a prime catcher, and a counter catcher. So we do still have to take the poltergeist there, trying to hope, hope for the game. A little short. So we do see Cloth take game one. Or <laughs> game as one, round one. As, as soon as they attack with a Bennett here, they, they just lose. So Yeah, they were, I think they were hoping that they had a, a, enough, in the dan- enough trainer cards in the hand. And then, yeah. So they can do something like that. Yeah, in our boss still? Okay. So, if it wasn't having our boss, they were kind of doing the Hail Mary play and hoping that because he is correct. Like we saw in his hand, the boss was in. There. Yep. With that, though, we do see, do you see the. Uh, <laughs> Gardevoir, Gardevoir take, take the L for this turn. Surprising me right now, as I'm looking, there's three Pidgeot Controls. Three people and brought Pidgeot Controls to a best of one challenge. Not a very strong contender anymore since everyone with like Charizard is tacking for it. I mean, two, I would, I would not be. It. Going going with two Toros and then even on top of that, either Team Yelgrunt or the pa- the Pal Pad, or you have the Reggie build, I which mean, just keeps going. It's it just doesn't feel as good. And like then you have like Lugia, if it just everything attacks. There's like and if future if future hands has any somewhat of a decent setup, yeah, I mean you're fine. Yeah, we're talking about future hands. Let's just look. Prince Vortex, he played this to the last tournament of Doom, running the Raging Bolt Lost Box. We play something similar. And then we had, I don't know, I don't know if Nelson is playing this week, Moxie. Did you see the list he, he won with last week? No, with all the travel, I haven't had oh. much of time. It was Gouging Fire. Just straight gouging fire. Just like straight like, gouging like, fire. Like the list from what was it, Singapore, Thailand, something like that. Yeah, let me see if I can pull up the list. I'll let's go straight to the. I'm looking at this list here from T1 Game Boy. He's doing the for a paraparig for for farigraph right. ex. Right. But yeah, he he ran gouging fire, two squawks, one ente, one del fox, and an iron valiant. And an Iron Valiant. Yeah, he was fixing okay. math with it. Yeah, the, that was the yeah that was the list that won that that regional. That what was it? Uh, second place was Dialga. That's when Dialga had its big resurgence. Right. Which we have. Let's keep the standings updated. We had Jam was like Jam was playing uh, five time five six time one. I don't even remember anymore. Uh, when Jam was playing Pidgeot Control, he was using it more. With Charizard, he was using it more as a Charizard deck that had control options. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I ran into one of those that was also running like the Reggie line uh, around 12, which I tied against. It was a very, very close game, too. Um, I, I, I own owed him to one when he had a Pidgeot out, but he needed a boss or some kind of gust and a switch out so obviously he drew it um he got the one of jet in his list and uh was able to search the boss to tie it up but uh that was a close high game that was a very very cool fun deck um it was a german player he was he was pretty good i liked it running the 2-2 kind of like zard line with the control variants I talk about all this, all this, all this stuff makes me want to play. I should really, I, I should really play one of these challenges someday, but I probably won't. 
looking at some more of the decks, we do have the Spy Ops Venomoth making a comeback again. Uh, what does that Orangaroo do? That Orangaroo back in that uh, uh, Giraffe Rig, it's essentially um, a memory skip. But instead, you're doing a little bit more damage. And you can, I think, like, I don't remember if memory, memory skip you can choose or what was the last attack they used. I'm trying to remember exactly how wording on that. I think you could choose. Memory, memory skip you choose. So it's a little bit of a thicker memory skip. I think that hits a little bit harder. Yeah. Whoa, that, that guy that got second um, this weekend, he, I, I just realized looking at the Venomoth, why I knew his face. He was the guy that was on stream like round four of one of the regionals that played the Venomoth Spite Ops deck. Mm -hmm. Some more of these. We are waiting currently on two matches. So, oh, who are those last two? If I told you it was all controls, would you believe me? Okay, yeah, Cash, it was Thailand, not, not, uh, that's right, Gouging Fire was Thailand. Yeah. Good out, Paparazzi, it's playing Blastoise. Alkia, Blastoise. I mean, it's still new enough of a format. Let's just try anything. I mean, let's go for it. Well, I mean, it's got Lake Acuity, so that's 20 less damage. And then on top of that, you have Solid Shell, so that's 30 less. So you're taking 50, 50 less possibly a turn. Surprised I'm not seeing um, any Meowskarata. I mean, it got 18th at Perth. It was basically like Charizard Engine with Pidgeot Meowskarata. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you really can't go wrong with a Pidgeot engine when it's tried and true in uh, Charizard already. You know, also, on top of that, you've got uh, Arceus Armorers still out there. That deck's got a pretty good end game considering what Armorers is uh, ability is, the 80 less. If you, if, if, you can, if you can get going just like any Arceus deck, that's the key. I had an Arceus player tell me that they always set up. And I go, no, you, you just want to tell yourself that so you can keep playing RC. You, you can have 17 energy in that deck and you'll still whiff it turn one. But yet in a Charizard deck, you'll open two to three energies and you're only playing six. Every time. I had today, I think I had an opening hand. Um, <laughs> I had three or more every time. I mean, I, I in, in Portland, I opened... Wrote him five energy two games in a row. I played six in the whole deck. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I think, I think honestly, especially playing so much on PTCG Live in preparation for like, um, you know, regional doom, all that stuff before UIC, I really don't feel like it's true RNG in PTCGL. It felt more like true RNG with. Um, online I'm not sure it just feels odd um, you can kind of predict like when you mulligan you have like energy and Pokemon search no basics then when you you know reshuffle in uh, just you'll have no energy and some basics sorry just had to go, go for the, one, the last game here yeah no problem there's, um, uh, yeah, the RNG just feels off in live compared to what it used to be on, on online. Can you see that stream, the, per the person sharing? Has it popped up for you? Yes, it has. Yeah, it has not for me yet. Let me just stop watching for a second and we'll see. Um, I want to mute you for just one second. Check, probably still hear me. Uh, does it look like their opponent's slow playing? Okay. Okay, you're unmuted. I was just I didn't want you to say yes or no on on stream. Yeah, it's still loading. Yeah, same. I'll I'll tell him it was still loading. 
I do have a warning box up at the top left there on there on their screen. Hmm. I think it's still loading on their side. Well, at least at least they asked. That's the kind of thing. Let me see what. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to do it. There was. It was Pidgeot versus Charizard. Okay. All right, it looks like they're all fine. So now that means we need to find our next, talk about our next game here already. Like, is there a list you already seen that we should reach out to? Um, was that for Rigoraf? Was that uh, 1 0? Uh, yeah, but I think they were from somewhere we weren't able to watch. But if oh, yeah, yeah, that's a different country. Um, some, some people like Cash are amazing, they're able to get like Singapore to run well. And some other ones are just there's issues. I mean, you can't go wrong with watching Moon if uh, my Maybelline is uh, able to stream. Um, Moon Kitty Meow says they're playing Lost Zone Raging Bolt, who's 1 0. That's something we definitely haven't had on. Yeah, let's. I mean, that sounds good. Or if we can get the Armor Rouge. I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I will always watch that. It goes off as fun. Yeah, so we'll we'll see who pairs up against who, and then we'll make a choice off that, and I'll start running into things. So I'm going to just pair next round. Actually, I'm going to make the triple check, make sure that the tie doesn't have any issues. Yeah, no, it's just a tie. Oh, boop. All right, so let's see some of these more popular decks. Make sure we're not running into something bad. So the Armor Rouge is up against Demir, against... And pow back Scalibur. That might be interesting just because it has the bench potential. Oh, I mean, they're playing Manaphy. Might be tight. Mm. Or we have the Blastoise. I mean, if they're live, Paparazzi. Paparazzi should be able to share. I'll ask Paparazzi. Which actually, I need to talk to them about coming on next week. If they're listening. <laughs> okay, good thing we're not doing cash. <laughs> <laughs> He's, I'm sorry, Cash. You're gonna get. <laughs> yeah, look, look at it. <laughs> the, the one, the worst matchup he can have. All right, Paparazzi said he's able to, so he'll jump us. We'll get the Blastoise this round. I mean, I want to see Blastoise work, especially if it. I, I don't know if it's just the numbers need to be good in the format for it to really kind of pop off or does maximum belt really fix the math on it i mean that's what we're due to find out there's just a lot going on in the deck you got bib line palkia line soyus and the one one pidgeot all i can say is these one oh don't doubt them let's see what's up what's up with leafy camo camo poncho Cosmo Poncho. Uh, the pro. Give me a second. I'll explain. It's a little bit hard to explain, but it, it, it is what it is. And so, multiple confirmed bug. Um, if you have the active has leafy cam, um, cam leafy camo poncho on, doesn't matter what it is. It could be a V star. It could not be a V star. It could be whatever. And you boss something from the bench. It brings that thing up from the bench, but doesn't send the, po the other Pokemon to the bench. <laughs> oh, man. So now you have two Pokemon up there. And so it's like, okay, great. What can you, and then whoever you attack, attacks the one with the leafy camo poncho. So, like, if you're playing Charizard against, say, this is the one that kept showing up in what, against Arceus Vulpix. You can't knock so out the you, Vulpix. You, you, 
You can shove a Mimikyu up there with a, a leafy camo. That'd be kind of funny. Yeah. Which looks like the game is getting, getting started. Blast you away. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's been banned because we had, a, we had two people run into it on accident. Two separate games, same round. And I was like, oh, great. And I had run into it and I thought it was a one-off. The glitch that happened to me on the ladder. So I, I didn't think of anything about it. I was just like, oh, whatever. You know, interesting, uh, looking at the list, I might actually say, instead of rating Greninja, because you have the draw and the search already with the Bidoof and Pidgey outline, if you did Radiant Blastoise for some extra damage modification. Ooh, that is true. Have to mention the paparazzi after this. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll message him because I got to message him about seeing if he's good, good to come on next week as well. I'll ask him right here. What's what about Radiant Ninja? Or not Radiant Blastoise instead of Radiant Greninja. I'll say no, no Radiant Blastoise and. Well, I mean, ask, Grenin- we'll Greninja's ask. always Greninja's always great with um, running Palkia. I mean, just to see if they can't get fully set up, and then you can take advantage of it. But if they do, um, it's kind of pointless at that. Just drawing extra cards when you don't really need to. Do, 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 do. All right, so the nice. How how do they always get the turn one Erda? I think I never get the turn one Erda. Double Erda. All right, let's go. All right, so they can get away without without getting uh, Iron Hands this turn. Could they could they actually attack with the Origin Form Palkia? If they limit the bench on their end to maybe two Iron Hands and two Crown, I think they'll be fine. They can not worry about the Palkia. But Blastoise does absolutely devastate it, though. But it gets one shot for three prizes. Or is it? Yeah, it's, it's no, electric. No, it doesn't. Week. It's grass. No, it doesn't. Negative, 50, negative 30. So, depending on how many modifiers, it's going to be weird with the modifiers. Yeah, you don't really want to overbench with your crowns to like make sure that Palkia is not an attacker. And then on top of that, like they get the Akuity. They need to make a move here. Do they freeze? Okay, I'm just I'm just making sure they didn't glitch out because like this is early enough they would reset the round. I mean, they should really vessel first to grab two more waters out because they still need an attach. Yeah, but I would I would also put down our Squirtle with that nest ball. Because you never know when they have the boss's orders and they do have that Maridon ready to attack. Right, and I believe this list is playing the two boss, one counter, you know, two counter, and prime. Because as, again, as well as Charizard players, I've played against a stack where they have the boss and they just hit, hit my Charizard, and I'm like, oh great, what am I doing? And then I remember I'm and playing Charizard against them, and I just set up anyways, I win. Yeah, and he, he did play hands the first round and did win, so, I mean... He knows what he's doing, then. I think he knows what he's doing, yeah. I think that's the biggest issue you run into with hands, is you are so susceptible to Roxanne and Irida, Irida, and Irida, Roxanne and Ionos, that you just end up... You're like, okay, I'm all set up, all set up, and the they, they Iono slash Roxanne you into absolutely nothing, and you just lose. Knight 
Night Posh is running Roseanne's backup. Probably for the batons. Or alternatively, the uh, the the free retreat. Yeah, I feel like I'd rather just play another copy of it. Or I mean I see only one Pokey Gear in this list. I mean Pokey Gear is not necessary, but I'd rather see more consistency versus yeah. like some techs. They're already running a teched nest ball. What's up, Alex? And, lo- and loss tracking. I do you but you remember playing do you remember playing the when the format when we had field blower? Uh field blower was amazing. We need I field know. blower back. It was so good. I I hated that we had like that and then all of a sudden they're like, here's chaotic swell. Goodbye, field blower. Come on. Chaotic, chaotic swell was like, you might as well just not run any stadiums, let them just run their chaotic swells. But there were so many good stadiums in that format. Now, I feel like this format is a very heavy tool format to where we need some type of removal because of the amount of abuse uh, with some of these tools that have nothing to check them but, you know, a two for one with loss vacuum. Right, someone in chat asked, I, I chatted to them, but I still need to say, say this for also for YouTube. Yes. They're new. They're looking to play online. They're looking to play the tournament, the Friday tournaments. What they asked, is their banned decks? No. They're asking because I, I asked, Lugia cannot win, is what I said. <laughs> That's the name of next week's tournament. Lugia cannot win, or this Friday's tournament. Lugia cannot win. Uh, I think that's why I said I need to double check it. Yeah, Lugia can't win. And the reason I said that is because I wanted Lugia players to come out and be like, hey! And we'll see if there's a meta shift. Because last, like, last time I said something like Cloth gets triple prizing, we watched Cloth become like the number two deck. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? Sounds good. Cool jammer? I think that was. I think that rotated. I think that was a rotated card. Yeah, I took it out of my playables. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, it was E. It was Chilling Rain. Like, anything in Chilling Rain. No, Battle Styles, sorry. It looks like Chilling Rain. Same, same era. He's being very deliberate with his moves right now, which I mean, this is the right thing to do. Does he? He doesn't play prime. Oh, he does play counter catcher. Okay, so yeah, he's got KO on that uh, Iron Hands if he wants it. The problem is one's got the the. You guys bring up the one without the baton. It sucks, but you gotta bring up the one without the baton. Otherwise, the other one's going to get you. He's got no follow-up play. That's the issue. (laughs) For Rubik, you just just wanted a lot of future hands players to come out? Maybe. Maybe. I just wanted to see how people react to it. I also like to see what people just say. Which I have actually banned people for what they have said in the questions. I mean, there's no no wrong questions. Well, there's 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 no wrong answers. There's no wrong answers to to your very weird questions. Well, okay, there is wrong answers, but oh, you went after oh, you know what? He's trying to adjust the the numbers because now if he hits him with the first attack, just try to get prizes. He doesn't hit harder. Because he hits 130 plus 20 is only 300. That 50 damage reduction, yeah. That's, that's 30, 30 damage reduction. It's 
huge. And he's not getting after you very much. Now I want to see what people have what people have said tonight. <laughs> Which we had a we had a full thing. Like I didn't I I to be honest, I didn't expect us to hit the 64. And we did easily. We actually had a ton of extra people. And no squirrel on the bench feels bad. Yeah, I was looking. I'm like, why didn't they bench the squirrel? Well, like this week, I asked for like, what's the best funk song? A lot of people gave a lot of good answers. Like Jungle Boogie. Make a groove thing. You drop the bomb on me. A lot of uptown fun. Too many exists. That's a good answer too. But we, like, I think you have to bench the Squirtle now, right? I mean, they did. Um, we had a person once. They used the the space to uh, do a Holocaust denial rant, and then their name the their name in itself was a reference to Nazis. Oh yeah, they got banned. Oh. So there is a wrong answer in the sense that I do read these and mostly I laugh about them. And I just let oh, it's like whatever. And some people just like put the question. But occasionally you get someone who comes through and says something and says the dumbest possible answer they can. They're like, ah. How can I get banned from an online public tournament? Like, okay, like next week, I mean this week's, the Lugia, someone's response to don't let Lugia win no matter the cost was, ha ha, Charizard EX go burr. <laughs> I'm like, okay then. What's up, Rambo? Yeah, we're running challenges on turn Tuesdays now. So I'm not up until 2 in the morning because I do actually have work in the morning. Right, you're not in this, Rambo. Yeah. You're always in like every, every online tournament I look at. Let's see if he... Well, I can actually check to see if he, he signed up. If he signed up a little late, sucks. What really sucks is you do get the one and done. So the people who come in and like play one round and then drop and I have extra players or people who don't show up. We had someone not show up for two rounds. Check in, list, everything. Didn't show up for two rounds. Just one person. But that, to me, that spot could have went to someone else. This is a tough call here. They're at three prizes now. They do have the bird set up. They have the iron hands. And there's the 30 damage reduction. But, amp you very much. It's only hitting 220. But you can get the, so you're not getting three prizes this turn, but. Man, if they could just get that Lake Acuity out there, because they would be pretty well set. Man, do I miss Big Charm. I don't. I don't know why. So that giraffe rig or paragraph or whatever paragraph <laughs> is two up. Ooh, all right. If we if we can get that on stream, that would be awesome. I will ask their opponent, them and their opponent. Maybe they can. I just I assume most time some foreign countries just have issues streaming for whatever reason. I just assume it. That's just it's just running. I've running the, I've been running streams for two years. Some some national sometimes it just doesn't always work. Sometimes it does. Like cash. Oh, I, I totally understand that. Uh, especially when this set dropped and I read that card, I'm like, it could have potential. I will happily buy four copies for a dollar each. Goodbye, Pidget. There's three prizes. Reminds me, I also need to check. Talking about some of the stuff, I need to check where my uh, puppet uh, for Coco is. I 
think it's supposed to be here by Friday. Yeah, I don't see a comeback happening. Especially if they have another boss lined up. Yeah. I mean, you could possibly boss up one of the Iron Crowns, but they, it just doesn't matter. You could also check their, uh, well, no, they usually have the free retreat stuff anyways. I'll say check how much they have an energy and boss stall. That won't work. Got too much energy set up on the board to really like matter with the batons and lost back. Yeah. I think you have to, I think you do have to take this and then hope they don't have enough to KO your active and they don't have the boss's orders. You're, you're praying on a lot, but you never know. There's just so much search and draw in in the crown and uh hands deck I have to it's, hard for, it's, it's hard for it not to be consistent yep there we go come on no catch it could be just no arvin counter catcher no they could just get another I'm catcher. Oh, I'm, yeah. It's almost there. I mean, this is one of the those one trick pony decks to where it has one thing in it that it does, and you just play support around it. It's not trying to be everything and everything. So, I mean. You can just get set up so easily and just play your strategy to it's like full potential. I think starting the Bibarel and losing it did not help Blastoise deck at all. Yeah, that was that was pretty rough. They had small hands the whole game, and sometimes a small hand is what you want your opponent to have. I mean, the, that's what some control decks do. I mean, I'm I'm surprised we don't see more of the shears yet. I did. See. I definitely feel like we're gonna have some sort of like combo with Shear and Pidgeot control. I did see someone playing Charizard with Shears once with the control matchups and then the other stuff, and then they would Shear their opponent after they had huge hands. Is their opponent win? Honestly, Shear is not as good as Kingdra. Kingdra. <laughs> Really, I mean, think about it. You, we still have um, Iridus in the format. You can get it out with just a rare candy and a Kingdra just as easily as, you know. And you put their hand down to four, and then it's a little bit better, and it's a shuffle. Well, not a shuffle. You put it to the bottom. I think Kingdra is just better than Sheer. Oh, excuse me, sorry, Justin. My chair sucks. With Eerie in the format and Sheer, and if you could somehow get, you know, King, uh, not King, uh, Arbok to work, I mean, maybe, maybe you can do something with it. I miss the days of trying to get Malamar VMAX to work. Oh yeah. Gosh. I loved I loved that deck, but it just never worked. Didn't we have um didn't we have a top one new was it one tournament? I want to say so. Like I think it I think it was um 
yeah, what I think it was New Jersey. I think it topped. We can twenty twenty two. Can we look up like hard on Limitless? Yes. If I can remember how. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember. Because he just or is it, or is it Pokemon Card.io? Almar Vmax. Results. Results. Uh Ryan Stablehouse took it 92nd out of Baltimore. 22nd, 29th in NAIC 2022. 13th at regional, Milwaukee regional. Santiago. Yeah, it's got, RCS Malamar has quite a few. 10th, 11th, and 19th at Vancouver regional. And 20th. I'd like to say it was Trick Roar. Um, what's his name? Real life name? I forget. He's on Azul's team. He played it. Did pretty well with it. RCS Urshifu Malamar. Like 38th at EUIC. Oh yeah, Malamar V had quite a few. A lot more than I thought it did. It was, it was an interesting card. I mean, it always had like just missing some other components to make it like really really good the fact though that it was a v and it was really hard to power up you had to put it with rcs yeah which rcs is just like the the perfect was the perfect pairing for so many cards what excited me about rcs rcs was like it's peak rum it's back and it's got a good thing to it but then it limited its limiting was so bad compared to peak roms yeah. Which sucks. I'm like, oh, V's, V's will be around forever. And they're like, no, it's EX's now. I'm like, no, Arceus. Vigarama was supposed to be back. And it was such a cool looking card. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, it still has its decks out there and it's still fringing, but it's not, it's not Pika Rom good where it stayed like good all the way up to like the end of its life. Mercy is definitely my uh my favorite well, uh, recent like sets and years. I mean, it was self sufficient, especially when you're still able to play um, the Intelli online with it. Oh yeah. We can have the win by my. Well, that's possible, paparazzi. You know what some of these other decks are doing? Do we have two raging bolts? Oh, we do. Yep. Oh, they went 2 0. So we're watching Raging Bolt Lost Zone next round. I promised them if they won one. Let's go ahead and go up to their, their, their table. Or- we'll have them. We'll have uh, Moon Kitty on here for the next round. Also known as Shira. So I'll start getting the next round set up. I, I'm, I'm working on some more stuff for. Uh, also for the uh, next regional of Doom, which is actually the week before NAIC. So if you're looking for NA- NAIC practice, the next regional of Doom, regional championships, quotation marks around regional, uh, as we are actually done, um, will be the week before NAIC and the week after LA. So it's like that perfect time frame. Yeah, I got that notification for it. I'm like, whoa, already announcement? It feels so soon. But honestly, our next set drops almost a month early compared to like our three month, just for the way the sets dropped. And it's in pretty good sync with Japan. They're getting it a week earlier than we are. So um, we're not going to have really much, much time. Um, in between sets, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's scary. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that was coming up so quick. Cause like, we're, we're going to start having, uh, re releases for it coming up enough, like, really soon. Um, first week of May, I believe it is. Yeah. Same weekend as Indy. Which I'm glad, like, the cups I'm going to will still be this format. So I'm not, worried about it but i'm like oh geez i'm gonna go there and people are like yeah i've gotten this card already 
I've gotten this card already. I'm like, man, I haven't even, I haven't even touched it. <laughs> I haven't played well, this know, set. There's not much in this set that's going to see much competitive play that can like stack up in, into the uh, current meta. Um, to be honest. Because we, uh, we would have seen it at Champions League. I, I, I feel the same way. Like I can bring it up while we wait for the game to start. We got, I've got them loaded. Just waiting, do, 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 do. waiting for them to do their thing. Also, uh, Cookie Alpha, thank you for a follow. Cookie Alpha, thank you for the follow. All right, so what's next? I know some people were talking up a little. Greninja? The new Greninja and also the new uh, Iron Heart, Hearthlight Mask Ogre Pawn. Like, yeah, I could do so much with this dynamic blaze if it's an evolution and you have the belt. You can take early KOs against Charizard kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, but that's a that's a lot of energy for a one prizer. It's a, it's a lot to ask. So I'm like, uh, I go, I can, I can attack faster with like Entei, who's already out there, and I can attach turn one, attach turn two if I need to, like if I'm going first, and then boom. If they had made Ogre Pond an ancient, I could have seen it. So Ogre Pond is a paradox Pokemon, though. Right. I mean, he's ancient. He's been around for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. I mean, we might see Dragapult EX might see some play, but even then... I think the only reason we'd see it see play is that it's stage one is playable. Yeah. If his stage one wasn't playable, I mean, two different energy types... Might have been a little difficult. I mean, you can run that new ace spec, the one that you know reduces the um, prize. I can see that happening, especially if it gets discarded. Um, you can get it back with um, uh, not Erica's. What's the what's the card? I think it's special energy back. I'm trying to remember. I just saw it in the other deck list. Hold on, let me take a look. Um, Roseanne's backup. I mean, you can play Roseanne's backup, get it back if you need to. Um, What's that? Just even even if you only want to use it as like a dual typing energy. Selected proxy. I always forget it has a selected proxies. What's that new A-spec energy again? Legacy. Energy. Yeah, that's when you're Legacy. talking. When you're talking. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I'd definitely say that'd probably be a spec of choice in that deck, unless you have some other type of engine. Uh, just, and you can actually cause a seven, seven prize game with all two prizers. <laughs> hey, Moon Kitty, if you can reshare your screen, we can get your game going. I also asked for the limitless, but just making sure. Love balls, like. Love Ball is great for the Charizard mirrors. Yep. I don't see Hyper Aroma getting play though. Maybe. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe with the Dragapult deck. They announced Scoop Up Cyclone? Yeah, they announced it like a last uh, night, night or two ago. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Um, that might be my A spec of choice in like every deck. Prize, prize Denial is. Um, oh, especially we lost them. in a deck where you can spike. Yeah, we lost them. I thought I had said that. Oh, no. Uh, who's God playing? See that. Back. They're able to. Sh Let's just go with their game and see what they're, what they're playing. No idea where we lost them, but I mean, we'll be fine. This is Charizard versus. Yeah, control. You know what? We'll get the game on. I'll worry about every, everything else. Else later. Like, uh, or what's the the hustler? The hustler? Who said cha cha slide? It's a 1-1 matchup, so I'm fully up for this. 
This is yeah. I mean, benching the this is actually fidget control. Yeah, benching the the Bidoof and everything. It's a little questionable in this matchup. So let me fix who the players are. The hustler. That sounds like the Riddler. I think it would be like the DC version, a little more. We we actually watched uh, Batman Forever last night. Oh, it's such a good movie. I mean, it's like the over the top Tommy Lee Jones and yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm sitting there going, man, this makes me feel a little old because I remember going and seeing that stuff in the theaters as a kid. Ooh, the cloth and the wiggly tough. They're going all out blitzel version here. Hey. But the zoo bat, are they, uh, are they playing the, the gold bat that has the extra win condition of like taking an extra prize card? I believe so. Yep. Okay. All right. That makes sense. I'd honestly, I would rather see a one-one line of the slow, slowpoke, slow bro. Now that is fun. Actually, I hate. I was always hate playing against Zoro Box when they would have that. Oh. And uh, it's and you can play it with a new um, new card, but with Thornton, it's actually much better. Um, to try and pull that off. We did some testing for that for uh, Orlando. I didn't, we didn't fully test it out and one of my friends played it. You know, he had too many, too many draws with it. Now, here, here, here's a, here, here's a question talking about Thornton. Do you think Thornton should see more play? Oh, the card is so good. So good, especially in some um, decks where you could pull off like trick hands plays and stuff like that i mean it's like because and there's a couple of people who are, who are talking about it uh going like yeah you know i love it i put it in every deck i was on twitter and i'm like you know you know i can see that i can honestly see that and at, at worst i mean you can swap out to something that you know, is good for the turn to where you can evolve into that was useless otherwise, like getting rid of a Rodom off the field to a Char Charmander that you can evolve into a Charizard that turn. I mean, it's pretty versatile. Are we gonna see him? You saw, you saw Tord play it in his little control version at uh, Utrek Ut Ut or Ut how do you say it? Utrek. Utrek. I think that's what um, and there's like an art store with a similar name. I think it's Utrecht. Yeah, it's so it's so versatile. I mean, you can you know use it in your control matchups, you know, so you're not stuck in the active. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff you could do with it. Trick plays. Zubat to season the opponent's board. Oh God, yeah. I I don't remember. Do you remember when uh, it was in GX? It was early Sun and Moon GX. It was one of the first ones. It was the one that looks like Donald Trump. Oh. It's that little weasel Donald Trump looking guy. I'm not sure. I didn't play till the tail end of uh, 2019 for a little bit. Okay. It was a Early sun and moon set. I gotta look it up. He he allowed you to look at your opponent's hand like once a turn. I'm just don't even remember the Pokemon. I'm trying to see if it shows up. Like I looked up sun and moon and it gives me like everything. I'm like, yay. Uh, I just do GX. It'll give me nine pages. Gum shoes. Thank you, Salami Bear. You're the best. Gum shoes GX had searched the premises. Once during your turn, before you attack, you may have your opponent reveal their hand. 
It was a GX. Yeah. Okay. It was one of the first GXs, so it saw some play because it was like novel so. I mean, you can't go wrong with information from your opponent's hand. Right. But then it like it, it was still a stage one, so you still had to have the uh, young goose before it. But that format was also weird. It was just a weird sun and moon, like just started. And then Guardians Rising drops. And it was just like, oh yeah, I know everyone plays uh Tabu Lele now. <laughs> Shadow Marsh or Marsh Shadow? Oh my god! I Marsh Shadow, Marsh Mar Shadow. Oh man, that card was so stupid. I I played in a small expanded tournament, like five people. It was myself, my brother, Mellow Magikarp. I was just I I only met him like recently at that time. So and like two other people, and one of them was one of the people who started up like the whole wombo combo, and he did that. And just absolutely devastated the tournament with it. I was like, I never got to play a single turn. I was like, cool. I lose. Bang. And, I, and after that, I'm like, I don't want to play Expanded anymore. Expanded is... That, that card's banned and Expanded, yeah. I believe, right? Yes, but it's... Expanded expanded is as close to Yu-Gi-Oh! as Pokemon You have to have like insane, insane. No, it's, 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 it's not. It's not like old Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I mean, I played Yu-Gi-Oh at the highest levels for until 2014. Um, they came out with pendulums and different stuff. I mean, that was after I quit. I'm like, I'm kind of glad I quit. Did you see that report going around about the guy who did legit, legit? Uh, quit a tournament because he couldn't stand the smell of his opponent. That that was very common occurrence. Yeah, <laughs> like, honestly. yeah, it was just interesting. That it made the news again. And and to be honest, I mean, they, they have hygiene rules that you, like you're disqualified from the tournament, and if it happens a couple times, like you're actually banned for like three to six months. Wow. Because to be honest, we have a Yu-Gi-Oh store near like 15 miles from where I live or so give or take I, I be apes up there three to five guardies I've been there apes I've been there um where I went in there to buy Pokemon cards because at the time Pokemon was I think it was pre-COVID it might have been post Pokemon was boxes you could still get for like 80 90 bucks not the like 150 you do now right I go in there and they're playing, it's a whole bunch of tables playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And I can smell them throughout the entire store, whoever it was. It was just bad. And, and honestly, it's Magic players and Yu-Gi-Oh! players. I, they just don't believe in deodorant. Like, I won't lie, I've run into like Pokemon players like that, but it's been such a rarity compared, compared to those two. And, and uh, showing butt crack. Yes. Always, always. The funny thing, the funny thing is, surprisingly, every Warhammer player I've run into doesn't smell like BO. They smell like chemicals. Like paint thinner? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like paint thinner yeah. and stuff. I'm like, I know that smell. I'm like, because I, I used to work with all that stuff. And I'm like, all you do is reminding me of like the days when I use paint. Like I've gone into games workshop to look for their paints there. Like I, I'm really into gumpla right now. I'm looking more paints for that. And so one person recommended game workshop and like five other people said don't use game workshop paint. So I'm like, uh I still went in there to look and try to see what their chrome paint looked like. And that place smelled so I mean, does, does it really matter what paints you're using when yeah you, actually there, it does when, when, you, when you when you primer first even if you primer it still, ma it still matters oh okay because you're still like your plastics plastic still how they bond with the primer and then everything afterwards so like some primer yeah I would, I would just i would just figure that the primers would you know kind of negate how it bonds nope 
it, you still have to be careful with your primer because like just some of them don't some of them will have a different mixture to it that might negate what another primer so everyone has their own their own sets of how everything is so they don't always mix well so what, the best primer that works with Umpla doesn't work well with the Warhammer paint because it just has it more of an issue issue uh, sticking. And it's also thing if I remember right, the Warhammer paint it do, doesn't thin as much, and you have to really use thin paint as much as you need to thin it for a Gumpla versus a Warhammer paint. It's weird. It, I feel like I really feel like they need to start getting that. The barrel stuck in the active this turn. Yeah, that's what I was as was everything that's a tournament of doom. Uh speciality here. We're like, yeah, let's uh, I'm talking about Warhammer paints when we're trying to watch control do exactly what you said. I would have rather gone for a mall while, but uh but do have they checked their pricing already? Not that I've seen, not that well. Or if they at any point want to attack with the chart, the Charizard. I mean, you might want to to clear the Backscalibur off, but uh, like if you know they, if they don't, you, you kind of want to put them into position to where they're attacking with the Backscalibur. And then at least dump the energy because they've already gone through. I think that's their second super energy retrieval. And but I really did love the inclusion um, that uh, he played Silene in um, Reagan's list this weekend. Well, well, Vast Queen's up here. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, the Silene was pretty nice to see him be able to get back like uh, super energy retrieval in some of the matchups, especially like burst control. Ooh, the Wiggly Tough would be pretty good too. Vortex, I think live is against everybody. They've programmed it to be evil. You ever read the book uh, Christine by Stephen Stephen King? The evil car. This is the evil program. <laughs> um, weirdly, <laughs> playing on my phone yesterday as like the uh, the refresh rate when you're after you're playing cards that go in your deck or anything like that. It was kind of doing like weird pausing um, I, that I've never seen before. They just put all that energy on board. That's not a good call. I mean, that just, it leaves what? One free water energy? Now you, now you can get a backscalibur stuck. Do, 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 it's do. not even going to be able to attack. No. This is going to be. I think, I, think, I think it takes three waters on the backscalibur, right? You're right. It takes three to attack, two to retreat. And you, you're going to have to use up almost all your energy here anyways to decay out this one pigeon. You do. You have to burn six because of the defiance. Now, now if you're sitting on superior, superior energy retrieval, like Aerie sounds like really good here. I mean, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not doing so bad right now. <laughs> now you're going to have to waste two energy to retreat and then hit with caliber. Which even then.
So it's really not worth putting anything else in the active. You're just going to have to let the Mimikyu die. Well, okay. You do this, and depending on what numbers they hit, you might actually be able to cheat you for the game. And then you got to watch their hand size or what they have in deck. I don't know. I, I don't as, long as, they, as long as they as long as they save their Jigglypuff for the end, I think they can still stay in it. They can also bundle here. Not not worth it. I don't think that they're gonna retreat anyway. Yeah. Don't burn it. You already know what's in their hand. Either the Rotom's going, or they're going to do uh, a little, you know, a kind of prime catcher. He could, he could Greninja and just get rid of the Pidgey just in case this turn. Because what? They got one heads on the Silene. I definitely, definitely wonder, like, it, it's starting to feel more and more watching games like Control isn't, was, was hyped up to be the dominant deck this format, and it's feeling like it's not. It just made people tech harder for it. Or at least learn how to play against it better. True. There's the retrieve. So this is the third. So as long as they have some sort of gusting effect or if they bench Charizard or something else, you can get it with like two Greninja hits. I mean, you could even double Greninja hit the Mimikyu, but he's got the pennies. So it's got to be some, maybe if he benches like the Jigglypuff, which is kind of out of the question, though. Yeah. That's why I wanted to see it last turn. And the Puff feels like you can do so much for them in this matchup. Maybe, maybe they didn't think of it. Or maybe it was a surprise. We just didn't see it. Yeah. That's one of the things I do hate about casting online versus like casting IRL. They get the benefit of seeing the prizes the whole time. We either have to guess off their quick search or see like their heavy desk ball. Maybe someday we'll get a. Uh... We'll get, we'll get a, a, a point way to watch the games. Yeah, if they did a spectator, that'd be amazing. Yeah, but the, there's issues with like, there's so many ways you could, like, depending on what you could see and cheat with that. Like, oh, hey, uh, here's. I have my friend, my friend Spectate, so he's able to check my prizes or something. Like, you'd have to figure out how you do it. Maybe like on a, a per turn delay. You know, somebody would figure out some way. Screwing it up. Yeah, I mean, people are always going to find a way to take advantage of stuff, and they're fine with cheating. So, no, they're not going to get caught. Yeah. So like, I, to me, it feels like 
if, if we go to a per, if it was on a per turn like one turn behind the spectator I'd be f that. maybe leave it to a coin flip on the Bavaro Yeah, I think leaving the coin flip to Bavaro is your best move. Or you you put it on the Mawile. Charm the Mawile. You put Charm on it. <laughs> So I need to update the standings because <clears throat> challenges are challenging for me. This is the only match left right now. Only match left. I think they just thought no. <laughs> Where's that giraffe rig? I think the giraffe rig finally lost. Yes, but I will still try to get him on it. We will need a matchup this next this next round, so we will be looking for that. Or if anybody who's in chat who wants to be a, be the next matchup, we are totally up for that as well. Honestly, control is so much easier to play on live than in person when you have crazy hand sizes and yes. you're just looking through stuff. God, I remember playing against one control IRL, and they, it was like they were looking at like a book every turn. It just feels so bad to like even Iono to six, but I mean, at some points you have to just restrict their hand size, just just so they have like that chance that they might whiff on something for one turn to give you a better odds. But Chien, I mean, not even a lot of them aren't even playing one Iono anymore. I mean, at most one Iono. Oh, now he sees it. Make him play it out. There you go. Oh, the Greninja getting in the win with the Prime Catcher there. I wasn't sure if it was prized. <laughs> I was like, if it's prized, I mean, you get a shot. That's one second here. All right, let's go ahead and go back to our standings as we will go ahead and see what we have here. But yeah, like if they put down they put down that charm, they should have won, right? Yeah. I'm fine. But sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes you, 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 you if you if you saw they were clicking it after their turn, they were like, oops, oops, oops. Yeah, we've all been there. I mean, I've done it plenty of times where I'm like, oh no, no. I, mine was like, oh, why did I just throw up my only Gardevoir Yaks in play? As I'm going into the Roxanne turn. Like, hmm. That was a mistake. Hey, we all make them. We all do. All right, let's go ahead and get this next round going because we do have three more rounds because I am crazy like that. But it's moving pretty fast. We have had no major issues tonight, which has been great. And then let's see. Let's get someone who's on top. Uh, do, 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 do. Unseen Oddish is up. He is playing Pidgeot Control versus Lugia. I don't think that's a good one. Yes. Oh, who was? Oh, it was. Um, what was their name again? T1 Game Boy. Let's see. T1 Game Boy, yeah. All right, I'm asking them. They are up against again. Anyone in chat? They're up against Charizard Pidgeot, but I mean, it could be a good one. 
Oh my god, I keep messing the refresh button. There it goes. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm looking at some other people. Who do I know who might be able to? Uh, I'm not able to. I see the hostler go up against Shira if Shira is willing to. I thought they were going to do a last round. Could do Unsinaj. We did have some issues. Yep, someone said they were uh, asking. Uh, um, they were. Is, is uh, Valor? Valor B. George able to stream? I mean, we've got the Venomoth Spite Ops 3 0. Uh, Ra uh, Rajamir says they can't, so we can watch the, from the other side of the draft room. Okay, so that's, that'll work. So we got, we've got the draft room. Cool. They are heavily tacked for Zard and Moon. Two Devos, three Miss Energy. And making sure they know, I keep forgetting to tell everybody, because they're streaming, they get an extra five minutes because of any setup. Not everybody can just jump right in. There he is. I know exactly how to get it, or they have to like turn on and off, on and off. So we make sure, and the game's already going, so I am getting you guys set up as quickly as I can. Go. And I'm looking through this. Sorry, we lost cash at a 2 0 drop. I know, stupid lunch. Who goes to lunch at 10 at night? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he lives in another country? Yeah, Rubik, I think I think next one we'll try to get the Venomoth on. That's not good. That that does Does that even out? No, that makes it odd. Okay. We would have had like a nice even uh one person winning at a, uh, what is seven oh? Six oh. Six oh. Now we can actually end up having uh some tiebreakers come in mm -hmm. if it works out. Yeah, like I won. I wanted the six up, hundred percent. But I mean, sometimes it just doesn't happen. Just like getting double buddy popping here off your eye, uh, <laughs> off your insta charge. Hey, I mean, at least it's not VIP. Oh yeah, I, I mean, as much as I hated battle VIP pass, at least buddy popping feels like it can help late game. That Orangaroo start must hurt. I know. I mean, at least it's to retreat. They've got the rescue boards in there. Neither one of them sitting for uh, weakness, surprisingly. So it's going to be kind of a slug out here. Especially the Farigaraf for, for, for for is at 260, that, like, that magic number that Charizard hates. Well, you got to give up three prizes to KO it. Or, and this one doesn't play maximum belt, you can use nope. the maximum belt turn after taking two. Or actually, technically one. One prize. Mm -hmm. Personally, I've stopped playing the 70 HP Charmander. I've gone like your 60s just because that 30 attack is just pretty good. So good. Um, I mean, if I'm not playing the uh, Jirachi, I do play 170 HP. Um, just in case you're put into that weird position to where you need to bench and get like a Charizard out and you put a 60 and a 70 out. Just for lost mine, um, yeah. just so they can't. So I mean, I'm fine with playing one seventy, and I and I prefer if you play the promo one versus the one that gets rid of stadiums. The one that hits for forty. The one for stadiums doesn't feel 
good anymore because we just don't have path out there. We don't have any and the art and the art just isn't as good. <laughs> Just, everyone needs to be Charmander. I go, let me eat you, Pidgey. I think it's their best friends. Their deck made for each other. As it is right now, this giraffe rig, rig giraffe does not look like it's doing. Not a hot uh, start. No, but the, one, one of the biggest things I've, I've, I've taken away from everything and like different people coaching and everything. Don't give up if your turn is this bad. It's like you can always turn things around. But you've okay, so they're they're playing the two charmeleon, but he's playing the double devo and he hasn't gone for Pidgeot. He went for the early aggression to clear a useless Pokemon off the board, which doesn't really do much. I would have rather seen going for a Pidgeot play and giving them an extra turn. They're not playing Mist Energy. So, I mean, they're being cautious of that as well. What's up? What's up, uh, Sorrowish? All right. Also, to keep things updated, make sure we got people who the inactives drop after two rounds. I need to actually put my my IRLs are list together. Okay, see here we talked about different things. Here comes that Mimikyu. Here we go. Mimikyu is just the bane of Charizard right now. He's, he's, yeah, he's gonna. Two, two hits with Charmeleons, which gives them time to clear them off the board in retaliation to make the Devos even better. If they can find something. You can get the Pidgeot here, boss, one of the not two. Like, you, you just gotta go for a Charmeleon. And then he's got to start doing any other things. You, you could clear a spot for the Radiant Charizard, but you don't, you've already, again, regressed too much. Too much energy already out there. So, okay, what's your next move? Because you can put Collapse down, Lost Vacuum the Collapse away, get the Char Charizard back out. You could also technically attack with the Biberel if you can get it loaded up. Charizard players playing the team yells, so I mean he can get four bosses off. I mean he can get, he can get around this Mimikyu, but if the Mimikyu is the last thing, that's what he's got. Yeah, do. yeah. I think the Charizard player is going to be pretty dominant and controlling from here on out, and then you can save the Charmeleon for the last bit, especially after they Devo. You've already got the two energy. And just evolve into the Charmeleon after that. See, I, I, Seller, I'll even bring this. I have to play the Clef up because I paid for the, the nice art. Maybe when we see nothing, come on. This is why Charizard is the number one deck. It's so consistent. Okay, here's the question though. Talking about playing Charizard decks, what's the optimal for Iono? We have four to choose from. I honestly don't like yeah. any of them. Really? I um, I purchased uh, four of the Singapore Regional um, English. It's the only um, foreign Iono that's in English. It has English backs, but it has the Singapore. Um, Champions League, regional league. Sorry, stamp on it. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I bought four of them. Wow. I'm uh, from, from one of Cash's friends, actually. So worked out. I they are a hundred. They are hundred and fifty a piece. A piece. Yeah, they sell one hundred fifty US, but I did not pay that much. 
I think the most I've paid for a card was actually, again, I've never paid more than 40 for a card, which I just paid 35 for Prime Catcher last night. Like, I finally, I've been trying to get it locally or trying to find something. Nobody's had it, and I finally just bit the bullet on TCG Player. Just sometimes. I paid, I paid 50 US piece. So, I mean, I can sell them, but I just want to play them. <laughs> yeah, it's like I got the I got the regional marked Cynthia's like when that was a card that was actually played. I had a whole play set, and I was like, you know what, I'm playing with these. And then I gave one away to a friend after it rotated. And by friend, I mean my brother. And I've kept the other three. I don't even remember how much it's worth. I, I, and I can only see them going up because they only printed uh, or they only gave out 70 copies or so yeah, so yeah. i mean oh geez yeah because you had to have five wins or four wins or five wins for them to to get a copy so i can only see them going way up i mean it's probably the most expensive i don't know yeah it's english print 35 for max belt Ooh, i'd pay 10 for mine yeah that's that's steep for max belt but then again he says has seller says their locals allow temporal immediately after Vancouver. So if you're trying to, it becomes an arms race. Yeah, really, uh, yeah. The first couple of weeks, uh, people um, were kind of in a rush for EUIC to even get like some of the cards. Um, some people were like, "I'm playing this deck because I couldn't get you know the best uh, a spec that I wanted." So they were like, "I guess I'm running ancient box." Yeah, it's what it is. I'm like, surprisingly, I've been finding like cards are shipping so much faster than I have been with like other things. Like, I I, I ship playmats back in the middle of March that still haven't shown up. Oh, yeah, I actually got insurance on a lot of them, so I was able to like refund people, and then USPS has paid me. The insurance off of it, like, yeah, we lost it. Yeah, USPS is so bad. It's it's Atlanta has become a black hole. It's everything in Atlanta is just like on bad. Did they find? Really, USPS isn't much cheaper than FedEx. I mean, I highly recommend FedEx if you're trying to go cheap. If you're trying to go cheap, you go, reliable. you go cheap. FedEx for cheap, but the thing is, at least USPS's uh, um, insurance is with every package. Yeah, FedEx, FedEx does theirs per shipment. UPS does it per package. USPS does it per package. They kind of have it in different layers. Uh, I work with shipping software. I'm a software analyst for a company that we do with, like third party shipping software that runs through like all the different APIs. Yeah, I'm <laughs> remind me to go check everything. Oh, wow. Uh, someone actually got their missing mail search work and now it's supposed to be at their place tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Darth Bean. If you're on uh, in chat, your package is going to be there tomorrow. But there's some other people like it disappeared on March 22nd and it has not shown up yet. Or it went to Atlanta and it's been stuck there. I actually, I actually had a uh, TCG player um, envelope show up four months later, heavily damaged. I don't even know how they got the address on it. And then it was delivered to my aunt's house in another town and then she gave it to me because I think they saw the last name on the slip on the inside and they eventually just dropped it off to her house but it was four months later that was that was insane yeah and the cards and the cards are fine the envelope was destroyed I I have one set of cards that have been a hundred percent first for me, and that was Parallel City. Multiple 
times I've had it completely get lost. Like the Jepper can't find out what happened to him. I can't find him. Gone. And it was always parallel city. Did you get the reverses too? Yeah. I hope opponent can see yeah. it there. Um, uh, as soon as you put the two bosses back in, they just could not get anything going. I feel kind of bad for putting them up, like wanting them on stream. I mean, sometimes what, what ends up happening is you just you, you play that fun deck. That's where we try to get the fun decks on early, where they will start to seem to run hot, because then you don't know what happens afterwards. Like it runs good for like the early rounds, and then later it just doesn't. And to answer, probably Polar Iono, those new, the newer ones, I, I like that art the most. And what do you think about the new uh, full art Ogre Pods that came out? They're pretty sick. I mean, most, most of the uh, Illustrator rares that have been coming out they just are don't, just so insane. They like, just, they're so good. They just don't miss. I wonder how many art submissions on each of them that they go through and that how, how much of a struggle it must be to like, I think maybe, maybe is that why we're getting so many reprint sets and like art styles for the same cards, just that they have such good art that they're like, we need to put this out there. Possibly what I've, I, what I know of their process is they run it just like any other art direction stuff. They get like the basic sketch and then they give them like, feedback like do this do this like what fits within the personality of it you know like everything about it so like we'll use uh okie dokie like uh i don't know the name of that right there but that with a photographer shot that illustrator rare is so top oh the suyan arcanine with the his uh trainer or the suyan growlite with the trainer i forget the trainer's name yeah that trainer i mean just having it as like that was one piece and then they did the flop i mean that that's awesome and then the art style of the what's that t t pokemon sinis uh what's the new new the new macho one yeah i mean Uh that that almost looks like um, Studio Ghibli style. Yeah. Uh, if you scroll up a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it. Uh, here, I'll share my screen with you so you can see what, I, what I'm looking at ahead of time. Yeah. There you go. You should be able to see see what I'm looking at now. I keep forgetting about that. Uh, I keep yeah. forgetting there's a 30 I mean, second delay, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like Studio Ghibli style. Like, I love it. I mean... Imagine if they did like a Pokemon version in that art style, like some movies, even like a side story or something. Yeah. That'd be so cool. What's actually surprising about this one here, the Namorous, this actually looks like your 70s, 80s, uh, kind of like almost Fritz the Cat kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? Weirdly, if they did start like art style, like Samurai Pizza Cat, that'd be cool as <laughs> well. Oh, got Samurai Pizza Cats. Oh, that's they're making me feel old. Like nin, like that old Ninja Turtle like comic book style. That would be cool. I'm surprised I haven't done like a straight black and white card. And they probably have, but I mean, like I was one of these new special illustration rooms. Yeah, with the high contrast, like the stuff I do with Doomed Gaming, with the regional map, which I got to work on that plaza. Especially when like your your style, like some of your stuff where you don't do like the hard black outlines. I like that. Yeah. And, and like I did submit or I submitted two for the illustration contest. We'll see how it goes. But like even looking at this, like I look at this uh far far uh far fetched, right? I was like surfetch. Uh like they probably asked for like the personality of it being like a nuisance. And so, like, they did that, and they probably worked with the, 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 how the posing is. And, like, at least with these cards, like, the smaller ones, you notice they almost always center the Pokemon. Yeah. And it's always the, it's what is the, 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 the main focus of the card. 
Whereas then with secret, il secret rare illustrations, they break those rules. So as you can and like see, the, the Blood Moon Ursa Luna. Uh, so good too I, I feel like this is more of uh, hey this stuff is not for playing this set is for the collectors um, yeah and then the, the players still get them because they're just so good yep but I, it really did start with like the tag team GX ones when we had like the Waylord and the, the Latios Latios and stuff like that we got some of those. They, they can totally do away with the gold cards. <laughs> Please. Well, they, they've done everything but the items. Well, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking rainbow. Yeah, no, the, the gold Pokemon can go away. I think gold items are okay. Yeah, I think gold items are fine. Especially considering, like, they do color code a lot of, a lot of stuff. And, like, that's actually great when you're, like, IRL deck searching. Like it's easy to find your ace back with this this bright magenta. Except worst thing for me is I become colorblind to magenta because of my job. I work at T Mobile and magenta's everywhere. And we use magenta for Man, everything. It's the company, it's the company color. <laughs> so like I've become like it is I've become what's called billboard blind to it. It's an actual thing uh that designers run into where if a person sees something over and over and over and usually it's billboards that's what, how they how they did the study uh they will start they will stop registering it. so i've seen so much magenta i've kind of just stopped registering magenta like i see it it's there it's not like there's a big black space it's just it doesn't it doesn't i hate to use the word pop but it doesn't pop to me Whereas in someone who doesn't spend all day around Magenta, T-Mobile's branding still works. Ooh, I didn't see this. Was there, was, there, was there a limitation on that tool that reduces the prize cards? Uh, let's go look at the... I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, it doesn't reduce the prize cards, but it gets discarded. Is it only once per game, or is it just the energy that's once per game? Let's look at the proxy that they have. Once per game. That one's once per game, but the tool, I don't think they limited to once per game, but it gets discarded afterwards. So there's, I feel like there's room for that to be abused heavily. Yeah. Well, okay, the tool one was Life 2, right? I don't think they've done it. Yeah. They haven't done it. I think Legacy Energy is going to be the new Life 2. Right, but that, uh, oh, you're that about, right oh, there, the survival, survival, cast. survival cast. I mean, That's, if you can get rid of their loss back, I mean, there's got to be a way to abuse that. Yeah. Because it's just Focus Sash now with a new name. Yep. And there was plenty of decks who abused the hell out of that. I saw a lot of uh, Lugia at the uh, Champions League running it. That was their uh, ace spec of choice. I mean, if it saves something, worth it. What does Perrin do? Build to implement your deck. Oh, Perrin is just Pokemon communication times two. Yeah, it, it, I, I think it's a little too specific. Yeah. To be worth it. Especially most of our Pokemon search, like, adds it to the bench if i would say maybe if you didn't have to add the pokemon to the bench off of um buddy buddy then you could abuse that card to search you know your your actual evolutions but scrim tell ex isn't worth it right no that card's horrible Actually, it's there's one use for it, and like I saw a couple Japanese players trying to like do stuff with it, but didn't yeah. look that great. No, I know some people were talking about Elephant EX being kind of good, but it's you can only put you obviously put it in play with Elephant Zero to Hero ability. 
we, we have other good paladins. That's the, that's the thing. Like we have the one that hits for two ten. I mean, you can you can abuse it just because of the low energy cost. I mean, any deck that is low energy cost that hits pretty good, people are gonna play it just because more deck space equals more consistency cards to hit whatever you need. Oh. <laughs> Did we did we get confirmed this in the next set or did we get confirmed that it's a promo only? Because I I saw that there's the box. Yeah, there is a box, but I think it was a different art. Yeah, I think it was like punching the other direction. Yeah, I I don't like when they do that when they're like they get lazy and they just flop the art. <laughs> you mean like Charizard? Yeah. Like okay, I, I have. My my IRL and do you see we're getting another version of the oh. same Charizard? Yes, but it, I think it's the best art. They're hiding the crown on it. So like, I have the full arts. I have three unique full arts. The Charizard, right? And each one's like looking in a different direction. That's it. Yeah, here's one. Here's two, and then one shiny. I think it's the same direction. Yeah, he's and- like. Honestly, the engine for um, what's uh, Rillaboom's uh, second stage there? Uh, uh, Flacky. Yeah, if you scroll up the the Flacky engine, um, I think that could actually see potential because you could do that multiple with multiple fla- uh, Thwackies. Yeah. Uh, the fa- the first one. Maybe putting maybe putting like a rescue board on. One of like a, I think it's like Goldeen or something like that. So yeah. you can just do it every day. And the real boom's not even that bad either. If you need to attack with it, I think it hits 180. Which is, yeah, that's definitely not bad. The festival, the festival, um, uh, yeah, festival lead and everything. The, that that engine seems interesting. And it really does seem like it. Want it to be kind of good to bring back like stadiums and be like, hey, you gotta get rid of these stadiums again. Yep. Hey, Castle doesn't seem good. Look at the top wow. eight and grab three. I'd rather just get Pidget. This doesn't feel vivid voltage bad, but it does feel kind of. Everyone's going well. We've got some chase eight specs. At one, two, three, four, at least people are probably want. They might actually they might actually be a little more expensive because of how bad the set is, people opening product. But I think collectors will open up enough to where it still might be cheap. I think collectors have really especially with the going back to the arts, if we get something really big coming through. Like right now, I think Greninja could be a draw for a lot of collectors. This is Greninja. Greninja's popular. I, I mean, it's a starter. It's a starter Pokemon that Ash used in the anime. It's probably one of his best Pokemon that he ever used. Um, people love it. We have two matches still going. Just waiting on them. Uh, one is Chin Pao versus Raging Bolt Lost Zone, and the other is Gardevoir versus Charizard Pidgeot. I mean, I've got a build of the Greninja that you know I'm thinking could be really good, still be Charizard, and you just go for a four prize turn at the end, and you kind of just abuse Turo's. I mean, I just don't think the card's been explored enough. No. And maybe it's just not the right time in the meta for it. Um, with Gardevoir coming back and it being psychic week, but uh, you can still, you know, just like uh, Rapid Bear, I mean, you can still take out their bench heavily and it doesn't even matter that you're weak to psychic at all everyone thought Manaphy would be gone possibly post rotation 
Not, not enough. No, Manaphy is like a mainstay of most decks. Well, that's the thing. Once F rotates and we have to use a stupid stage one uh, spider thing, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be bad. Oh, it's going to um, be horrible. And it's only 90 HP. Now, if it was like 120, I could see like it not being so bad, but a lot of, you know, that kind of like threshold of like 110 that, you know, you get a lot of these one prizes that can hit. What we never got, though, was some decent one prize fire attacker that could be thrown into Arzorn. Uh, like, or yeah, I mean, we well, we have what uh, Moltres that can hit for 90. And if it, only if you put damage counters on it yeah. with Magma Basin. Like that, that was meant to work with Magma Basin and just obviously never one. Magma Basin is honestly the best stadium overall power wise because just energy acceleration is one of the most important aspects of Pokemon that makes a deck good or bad. It's just energy acceleration. Yep. And fire really doesn't have that, that great a Pokemon. It's, it's, it's best Pokemon is not even a fire type right now. It's a dark type. <laughs> All right, next round is up, and we will try and see who we can get. We wanted to try to get the uh, Spide Ops uh, deck, right? I think they were. Yes. Let's see if we can get them. They are currently 4 0. Let's see. That's Demir and Baller. That's no, not it. Is the person he's playing against isn't able to stream. We already know that, so I'm just asking him. Hearthflame. Oh, we actually brought that up earlier, Stellar. We think it's just a little too much energy costs and everything to use. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Looking, 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 looking. Any other interesting decks? Uh, H Gibbon maybe with the uh, with the baby the baby one going. Rajamir is up against Goldingo, but I, I don't know about that. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing some Guardy if. Uh... It's actually pure guardy. Which uh, which list is that? The Philip George there in Brazil. That's the one I'm trying to get with a uh, baller, but neither players responded. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, da, 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 again, I see people I know. Again, anyone in chat who's able to stream their match, I don't even. We don't even care much about record right now. Uh, we would definitely like to have you on. I do know Nodder, Nodnarb, but they don't have anything. Uh, Paparazzi finally got back to me about the Britty and Blastoise. And he said he's thought about it, but he hasn't fully tested it. Yeah. I, mean, I definitely think it's worth testing just for those one shot capabilities. Okay, so Darian and H Gibbon say they can, so we'll get their match going. Wait, okay. Um I mean, if anything, I mean we always have that raging bolt lost box. We never got to. I know, I asked them a few times and they haven't responded back. I, yeah, first time I, I said to the players, you get an automatic five minute extension and both of them like sick. We're, we're streaming. But this is uh, the, the, baby, the baby moon 
versus Arceus Gear 2. Okay, yeah, I was just looking at that one. I was like, huh, there is an Arceus Gear is still hanging in there. They like to hang around, man. All right, just waiting for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I played it to death just as much as Cash did, so. I wanted to. I even bought the cards. For it, and I just never, never have. Just never played it IRL, and like my Giratinas have sat in my playables for months. Going, right, please play me for the rest of the Lost Zone. Because Gear, <laughs> as Gardevoir gets pulled out, as Charizard gets pulled out, as Blocklax gets pulled out. Hey, I played it. I played it to Pittsburgh this year, and that was just like. All right, are you going to be able to handle the Lugias? The funny thing was, my I lost. Uh, I had two tie, two draws, two losses. My two losses were to Lost Box, which were my best matchups. And I ended up getting donked with Badoofs out in the active. Um, oh wow, this is on tablet. I've never actually all, seen all the four, game on tablet. All four games, and I actually beat two Lugias and two Tinas. Um, so I mean, it was just a really wacky weekend. And it was not good. All right, so we oh, no, oh, oh, so you're gonna be able to see more than three cards at a time. Yeah. Which is interesting. Like this is the second week I've had um whatever it's called. Tablet players. Yeah, a tablet or a, a player because what we wanted to see the deck and it's just like, you know what? We'll deal with it. It's a weird board size. Right? Like this makes me feel like <laughs> why can't Very weird. Why can't phones do this and just be smaller? Right? So I mean I mean we'll we'll take it. We'll always take it. I mean, honestly, I'm seeing pretty well here. So someone's gonna come in and be like, hey, is that is that mobile? No, this is tablet. I don't hate it. I, I think they could space out the board a little bit more. Um and fit it fit it in a little bit better, but maybe it doesn't work just because of the size of the rectangle for the bench space and the way that the curvature is. I'm surprised we never. You could always, you could always, you could always extend that that curvature up to widen the bench. But I'm surprised we never actually got a proper uh, portrait uh, landscape mode for mobile because PTCGO could handle it. Have you, has, has your phone never glitched and just gone into it? Nope. Mine has like uh, maybe like five or six times, and it's awesome. It is totally awesome, except when you're swiping out over your hand, sometimes the app likes to close when it when it does it, and then it reopens up um, back in the uh, landscape or uh, portrait versus landscape. But I mean, I have you know iPhone. I don't know if it really matters on uh, if it's iOS or whatever the other ones are called <laughs> android yeah what are they, what are they called like candy something or other all the different ones like i don't even know what the newest one's called <laughs> it's the newest android like, it's had like kit kat and other things yeah, yeah i mean i have no idea it switches and like has like different flavors for whatever company uh put out the phone at the time yeah android 13 was called tiramisu Okay. Android 14 is called Upside Down Cake. And Android 15 is going to be called Vanilla Ice Cream. Seems just kind of lame and plain. Yeah, I know. Android 12 is going to be like Pineapple Upside Down Cake or yeah. something. Android 12 was called Snow Cone. That's kind of cool. Red Velvet Cake was before that. Wednesday Tart. Pistachio Ice Cream. Oatmeal Cookie. 
New York cheese. Oh, they actually have a new song now. Doom to doom. Emiosaur, thank you for the thank you for the the prime sub. Every time you give a prime sub to to me as a sub, that's money taken away from Jeff Bezos and Amazon and given to Doomco. Doomco is the greatest thing to ever exist because I just want to say it. Uh, again, thank you. I appreciate it. everything that goes into the stream. Every, everything that is given to the stream goes back into the stream. So I don't run away with your whatever amount of money your subs are. Go in half box and go, ha ha ha! I'm going to go buy an Android Oreo or something like that. I mean, this is an incredible start for the Moon Player. Yeah. I mean, you can't, re you can't really hope for anything better. Now that they're stuck with a Tina, and if they don't have an Arceus play here. I mean, their hands could be abs absolutely dead. The sad thing is, like we're not at, we're not at the point with this this Rory Moon deck yet, where we're Okoing with the babies. But I mean, usually you kind of want to hit early with them, maybe bring in the big ones from the middle, and then use the, the baby ones to finish out the, the day. And especially, they're in the position to where they've already got an energy on the bench. One, they can start using their explorers to like dig through and discard cards. No, you're supposed to explore his first here. I think sequencing, especially with any of these. What's up, Arsenal? Hell? Um, can be extremely. And like you never know what you're doing right or wrong. Like you can you can say Yeah, so it's always especially if you're Pokestop sequencing, I mean you never really truly know because it always matters what's on the top of your deck. Yeah. Like I will say if your deck's not full of items, a lot of times the Pokestop is not what you want to press. Like the the amount of Charizard players I've watched watch all their pidgets go into the discard of a pokey stop. Or even worse, I've seen someone go two you got two pidgets and a rare candy off theirs. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, uh, that doesn't matter now, does it? You know, like at that point when you're playing against like Chien and you're like I could really use an item to discard um, because I want to keep the stuff in my hand and you're just trying to get something off the Pokestop for like an Ultra Ball discard. And uh, it never works out. I mean, at least on live. You know what I think my favorite part of this is right now? It's how big the button is on the bottom whenever he has the, he finishes an action. Which also, honestly, is probably like the worst thing because now, now you can accidentally press said button. Though, one thing I like playing on iPhones, I hate the um, little black box at the top and I can never know how many cards are in my opponent's hand oh, half the time. Because they didn't, they didn't format it for the notch, right? Right, exactly. And you know what sucks? The same thing kind of happens with the Androids because we have the we have the pinhole, and some that pinhole will be like right where the the number is. And I'm like, is that a six? Is that an eight? It's like, <laughs> they can't tell between the sixes and eights half the time. Are we going to see a uh, frenzy gouging here? Did they discard the stadium? Yeah, there's no stadium. Oh, they still play. got it. Okay. Yeah, they still got it. No, no, I was just still got it in hand. Oh man, that, that's yeah. kind of rough. The one with the energy, but I mean, there's no no way he's coming back after four prize deficit. Yeah, no, that's, that's going to be very extremely difficult. Now, now that you've just went and uh, 
Explore Guidance War ancient type ancient Pokemon in there. Actually, you're not even putting any ancient and ancients right now, but I mean, you're still getting something going in there in that deck more. And he's gonna get another one benched. Was that all four dark patches, though? Yeah, I, I think believe so. it was. What? Any of the deck, maybe? He's, he, well, I, no, I mean, he doesn't really need to worry. He's still got the two fully powered up baby moons. He doesn't even need to put another one out. It seems like he's in a very, very good spot here. See him losing. There's. Yeah, there it was. So that, again, this comes back to us talking about like baby moon. Like, just how good is it? Like, it's doing, it did pretty well there. But then again, like, Arceus never, this Arceus just didn't set up. And, like, that's also one of those things we, things we talked about. Like, how much does Arceus actually set up? Like, most Arceus players will tell you every time. And then you watch him play and you go, no, I don't think you do. You don't know how many times I've sat there and, like, you know, had to burn, especially when Mew VMAX was a, a thing, you know, burn an Ultra Ball just to put down another Arceus. Even if I get one knocked out, I'd have to evolve, search for a double turbo just to attack with like a basic Arceus. You know, I mean, it really is format dependent, but it was never that consistent. And if anything, you'd put two down with no energy just so you can attack with one and charge up your Arceus for the next turn and hope they don't one one hit KO your active Arceus V. I mean, that came up a lot. So there's no way that you're lucky enough to uh, actually just get it set up every time. And if you are, you know, tell me how. Yeah. Here's a funny thing. Lugia is currently 5-0. I hate to see that, honestly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so do I. Sitting so here going like, like Lugia, Lugia can be such a brick. And they're actually going with the Prime Catcher instead of the Master Ball. They are just like. But I do, but I do love the two Morty's convictions. I like playing Morty's convictions, but. They're not playing, they're only playing one Serena, two Mortys. I like a 2-2. Two, two. You know what, yeah, I kind of like the Mortys a little bit. Like, okay, the Serena, the Serena has the benefit of, like, any Dax playing Vs as an extra gusting option. But the Mortys is just simpler. You have a set, you have a 10-card hand, and you can still draw more. Yeah, and, and at least, if you can only discard one with an Ultra Ball... Morty's doesn't just punish your hand size. You're not going to draw any cards off of it. You're still going to be able to discard the one. And then draw usually three cards I've seen. Two to three. Unless they get like a crazy full setup bench against like Chien. Which you're already unfavored against to begin with. So. I think. (laughs) I'm going to at birth. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. I never even fully looked at what purse. Uh, <laughs> Charizard, 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 and like two other decks. Yeah. And it was the, it was all like the Reggie builds, whether they had the one one bib or did not. It was pretty much same fifty eight mm-hmm. on uh, four of them. Whether they ran one one bib line or not. Like, I think, um, like, I was playing last round next to um, Ian on my left and then um, Brent Tonneson on my right. Um, and they both had, like, the Reggies out and stuff like that. Um, I think they just got stuck and benched them, both of them. But I was like, 
Yeah, don't really like the Reggie compared to just running the Futuro and one of the team yells. Just personal, just because of starting Reggie with three retreat costs just hurts. So I'm asking Crash to just okay. As much as I like to bash Lugia, he's still five zero. It's still a good deck out there. I just like to bash Lugia because it let it let me down before. Lugia flying Pikachu. Me rest forever in the tie bracket. Because that's what happened to me with it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll get you because it should be a clean 6 0, and it should only be one fi- other 5 0. So we, <clears throat> um, that, again, you on, with, there he is right there. It means we'll have like, essentially what's the finals in quotation marks. We should have that soon enough, which we are currently. If, if Crash loses, I mean, he's going to bump his opponent's win percentage. Unless he, as long as as long as it's Crash versus Demir, Balor, or the Hustler, they could actually take it and steal it from him. That is true. Yeah, uh, okay, I will definitely say Oceania. And when you look at it, it always ends up with, like the same the same top eight. Like do you remember that one was all Palkia? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> all Palkias. I oh. mean you have all these US players that have been flying over there and just uh you know, they're already consistently good players and then they'll just top. Yeah. I thought four O's only, okay. I thought only four O's left were Baller and Phillip who are playing each other. Yeah, I'm looking at the standings. I didn't realize that they were still playing. Okay. Yeah, they're the only ones. The Hustlers four one. Demir and Raz are all four one. So we'll have one six O. One clean clean yep. cut six O. Unless they tie. That is true. They can tie. Come in and ID the last, the last match for no reason. And I, I, I would feel like Gardevoir still has a decent matchup against that. So yeah, he either gets the Spide Ops, which we've been trying to get on all night, or he gets the Gardevoir. And I don't really know how the Lugia Gardevoir matchup goes. Uh, I don't either because I've never played either one of them against each other. Every time I play Lugia, I usually end up against like control decks, which Lugia just eats. And every time I play Gardevoir, I end up against like Charizards and some other and Lost Box. I've never, I mean, old Gardevoir, you'd have to set up you know your baby Guardies, which would take a little bit longer, but now you don't really need to because you usually come with the drift. Yeah. And you have what? One, two, three, four viable it's single prize attackers in Lugia. And they don't need much energy to KO their single prizers for against the Guardian. One, <laughs> one energy <laughs> on a uh, Winston Chino. Oh wow! I just had a friend friend message me. Um, I I do like keep up with, like Uber stuff because of the animation and stuff to it. Someone spent all their time and made a full Fallout themed one, including custom Hit Boy animations for their character with, the, with their character. And the thing is, she's not like an anime version. She's like a 1950s Latina. <laughs> I actually I was watching um. I was getting into episode seven or eight. I'm on the show is so good. I'm on six right now. I know what happens, but no spoilers for anyone else in chat who doesn't. I, I don't know what happened. So, I mean, it's just, it, it's such a f- good show at a time right now where like, um, I was just kind of finished with Shogun. That's such a great series. I need um, to start on that one. What else? Um, 
the last this past season of Halo was really good. Uh, I think it was much better than the the previous season. Um, what else was out? Um, I think uh, what comes out this month, the next season of Star Trek Discovery. It's going. I, that's going to be great. I'm all about strange new worlds and lower decks. Love. I am sad. Lower decks is ending now too. Oh, really? Yeah, five seasons, just like Discovery. It sounds like they're doing five seasons for every show now. That's what you get. I hate that. Yeah, <laughs> except Picard. Picard got three. But <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, he's he's just getting old. Patrick Stewart. Yeah, he's like, yeah, we should probably just do this next generation reunion I mean, now. Is he, isn't he like ninety? Uh, Patrick Stewart is like in his eighties. Patrick Stewart is old. No, uh, eighty-three. Oh, only eighty-three. Only okay. eighty-three. I mean, uh, look, look at the the original um, uh, captain. They just sent him to the to, space to in, in a giant uh, William Shatner in a giant. Um, I mean, it was a horribly shaped ship, but you know what I yeah. mean. He's ninety three. Yeah, which we I actually share a the a birth date with him, and I have been hoping he would go out and do autographs somewhere. Like, I mean, he's ninety three. Don't doubt, no, <laughs> no reason for him to go out. But I have an enterprise of wanting him to sign for years. I mean, he's doing great for ninety three. Like. Him and George Sakai are the last ones who are live from like Star Trek original Star Trek series. Well, no, actually, I'm sorry. Walter Koenig is still alive. Did Leonard Nimoy pass? Was it like eight years ago now? Yeah. They're like, George Sakai is like living in pure spite of trying to outlive Shatner. <laughs> well, no. Um, yeah, he's the Japanese guy, right? Yeah. Him. Okay. Him and Shatner never got along, which the round is done. We're going to move on. Round six, up now. Let's get going. Let's go. Let's see who they are up against. Oh, go up again. So it is the Gardevoir player. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. I definitely want to see what we can actually oh, get yeah, out of this was, matchup. It was a Gardevoir, right? Yeah, it's straight Gardevoir. Oh, the Spide Ops person 4 1 drops. Oh, no. But you know what? It's, it's 2 a.m. here, East yeah, Coast. 11 here. But, I mean, it's a, it's a challenge, right? It's just 4, 4 1, you're just like, whatever, right? Actually, I think they they stand a good chance of still getting prizing. No, um, maybe. Never actually collected any of the prizing for, from any of the tournaments. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't care. They're just like whatever. They. I mean, it's uh, for rainy day fund, I guess. <laughs> it's it, it completely went away once live did the craft system. People just don't yeah. care about codes anymore. I I have over a million crafting from that glitch. So I have I have been able to maintain between just battle passes and playing the game sixty thousand or more credit the cra- crafting credits after I had my initial uh, initial stuff. And I don't know if you heard about this, but um, it was over Twitter. Basically, that glitch was purposely put in place by the dev team and then they were creating um accounts that have over two million glimmer or or whatever the heck it's called uh and selling it selling the accounts to the new chinese um market so the dev team was making money on the side people bought the accounts reported them and then the devs banned them from the forums for reporting it wow 
That's what you get when you get a Chinese dev team and people like found out through, I guess they were um, streaming it on Twitch to buy the accounts. So there's like a whole crazy thing in the background of why these glitches for like in, like unlimited um, Chinese miners, basically, like creating these accounts just to sell them. Well, got to make money somehow, I guess. Right. I mean, a side hustle. Everybody's got a side hustle. I mean, I, I, I sell copyrighted, copyrighted images that are actually I illustrated. They make you pass. That doesn't sound good. Especially considering they got the Archeops here. They got. Oh man, they got the heads. Okay. They've got. Yeah, this is not looking good. Good. Now you know if you need double Lugia down. I don't think so. And like the Mimikyu you just take care of with the Chinchino. Gardevoir is just so slow to set up. Evolution, energy. I don't know. Oh, so they're they're praying. They're praying they're gonna get some roll. I bet he draws two good V stars. Nope. Oh, well, he's got, okay. He's got the Ultra Ball. He's fine. Nothing off the, off the heavy ball. Okay, got the Poffin. We got a game. We got a game. I would say probably if they don't bench a Luminion, there's no way they can lose this prize mapping. They just want to... they do some, they, if they do some tricky like attack with Gardevoir plays, they might be able to sneak sneak through. So, and they got the Chino to the Chichino to attack. I don't know. Get rid of the energy. You don't need many, much energy in this matchup. Cause, yeah, because you want to use the boss here. You can go get one of those uh, refinements. That will cripple them. That'll slow them down a bit. I will always say playing online is always nice. That, that does the math for you. I don't know if I agree with another primal turbo right now, but. I think putting on one energy is fine on the Lugia. Just have in case they do they do come and get, get the KO. Yeah, I would just put a gift on it. And the fact that your Archeops late game are fine attackers into this deck. I really feel it feels like a little bit here. The Carnivore is just like one, maybe two steps too far behind. Like that opening. I mean, they, had, they had a great. They had a great start with <laughs> Lugia. Which, I mean, as we're talking, Lugia bricks. This one did it absolutely did not. They got everything they needed. They did everything they needed. 
clearly for six rounds, Lugia is king. We have a play, a local player who plays nothing but Lugia, and he uses he will gift him, he will give himself extra cards of draws. Like you knock out something with gift energy, if he already has eight cards in hand, he'll draw like an R five. And he's been caught multiple times. He just draws extra cards. Yeah, constantly. And he, he's been caught multiple times. He's banned from multiple stores, but he's still out there playing. And it's not like it's not like oh, I thought Gift Energy gave me seven extra cards. No, he he knows. He's just he's just trying trying to exploit everything. But he can't hope you're not paying attention. I was about to say, like, they picked up the Iono. I was like, do not give them extra cards here. This is the worst time to do it. I mean, if they had gotten rid of the missed energy and just held on to the research, I think that would have just been better. And then the Lugia (laughs) concedes. Oops. You've got to take a knockout this turn. If, yeah. you're, if your prize deficit is three, that's it. Too much. The prize deficit of three has always felt the most unattainable, I guess. When you're not. Hitting two prizers, yeah. Yeah. And who knows? I mean, with the placement of Ancient Box getting second, it may be enough to drive like the Guard of War players down if people start to pick up the deck. Guard of War cannot beat single prize decks anymore. Nope. And you, you, don't, you don't you don't have you don't have that HP you know, benefit of like, okay, I can, you know, hit with baby Gardevoirs again into Lost Box and like still win without like actually putting damage on my Pokemon. Or I'd like to see maybe more Tarot's in Gardevoir to where like you can actually attack with no, you can't. I mean, Baby Moon. Yeah, it's not even really that viable. Yeah, it causes too many issues. Like, we do see the Drifloon get KO'd here. And they're just... Working off, one, working off one card, maybe three, maybe two if you draw an energy. Iono, something. Super Rod hurts. There's energy. You you have two Drifloons in the discard already. Drifloons not coming back. There's the Ralts. I mean, you can come up and attack with the Gardevoir, but... Yeah, I mean, all your attackers are in, in your discard pile. At least the ones that would know what Oko, what's in front of you. You've already burned your supporter for the turn, so you can't Arvin even to get to the correct numbers with the Drifloon unless you just raw draw your um, belts or not. But Raw draw sounds so dirty this late at night. <laughs> I mean, you can attack with the Fluttermane here. Yeah, 
you know, one of the Archeos, maybe with the Curlia. Uh, it's still not enough. Yeah. I was, I was wondering if they could, if they could try to try, and this is not knowing what your opponent has, try and like get the other Archeops up there, take the smacks to spread the damage, and then try to do it again, maybe. But now, the only thing they can really do is use Gardevoir to KO the Sinchino because that's the only way that you're going to get two KOs out of a Pokemon and you just wasted, without them return KOing. And you just waste the damage counters on the Lugia because of the Mist Energy. Well, I think, is it a DTE or a Mist and a Gift? On the, on the, it's a DT. So yeah, he could have put it on the Sinchino. Yeah, all the mists are on the Lugia. You could have put that on the Archeops. Well, we're gonna see the bot the boss's orders here, KO on the Gardevoir. That should Did they haven't even they haven't even like looked through their deck? Okay. So they play three boss, okay. Isn't that that's essentially gonna wrap it up here? Yeah, that's it. I mean I, I guess I guess what they could do possibly come up and swing with another Gardevoir EX try to live another day and then you still have that problem with the Lugia and what, how do you get rid of the Lugia and how do you get rid of everything else that's why I thought like the mischievous to bring up the other Archeops because they didn't know they have jet energy in hand could at least prevent right. it some time because then it was shut down like at least its abilities and force it to like get something else going yeah, it's got to be a Gardevoir attack followed up with a Turos. It it just kind of ran away from them. Like we were, like we were just talking, like it just doesn't, it, it doesn't have that big, easy single prizer that can attack anymore. They still have a hero's cape. Uh, they're only one, running one bravery charm. Hmm. So they are Vin. I mean, it still is here. You attack with the guard of our EX and pray. It has to be into that Chinchino. Um, what? what? You whiffed everything, and yeah, that's game. Yeah, they're just going to use that Archeops and just get it out of there. Because the Fluttermain only works on D6 that are in the there. It's like if you go in and you take the KO here with the Garvor EX, the Chinchino is just going to KO you anyway. Exeral or 90. Like, okay, do they have enough uh, enough stuff, enough energy, which they should. For no reason they don't have enough. They only use two Pokemon the entire game. Yeah, it is. Gen energy. It doesn't, didn't matter. So Lugia, I don't ran over, over the Gardevoir. Gardevoir looked like it was playing well. Just didn't have it tonight. This is too slow. I mean, you're not you're not hitting anything Besides a Lugia for two prizes, really. We're not at the point of the meta yet where I would say that we're everything, everything's speed, everything's fat. We're not there like what you've had previous battles like that, but Gardevoir just still feels like a step too slow right now. It, 
You used to be able to take that slower game, not as much right now. Well, it's, it's really format dependent. What's uh, actually being played. And now you have hands, which just can still run you over way too quickly because they're taking a prize initially with the Maridon. And then they're following it up with two more prizes that you're already down three. So you've got to be able to then KO the hands that turn, the next turn. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's really that great. I mean, Gardevoir has a great matchup in the Zard. And oh. it's not even, not even great, great. It's 55, 45, I'd say. Cra- Crash and Chat, who was playing against it, also said he did have a line in the sense that if he was able to uh, scream tell the other Archeops and get, keep that fish stuck there, that would have bought him five. Yeah. So I did see, I did see the uh, scream tell was in the discard. I had no idea if it, if it was, if he was had any more rods left. But yeah, he definitely that was probably the line he wanted to take. Yeah, the, the, best, the best line would have been Gardevoir, Peo the Centino, have its heroes on the Gardevoir, which would have just bought you a turn after getting hit into the Gardevoir. But then you still lose to a boss draw. But yeah, that was really the the easiest line of play. But with that crash, with that win, you are our only, only 6-0 tonight. So Lugia is the challenge of Doom winner tonight. Easily there as Philip Hore will be in second place here with the Gardevoir. Then we have the Chimpop Excalibur currently at third as well. No zone coming in. Currently at fourth the Goldingo, but that can change. And we'll keep that and up. Lugia to- takes it down. Lugia all down. That, that, makes, that makes Friday's Tournament of Doom even more prophetic. Lugia cannot win. Can't. No. 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 So we'll definitely see how that goes. With that, we only have a couple a couple matches left. I'm ready to call it. Uh, let's see who is on. Let's go ahead and send you guys off to High Flyer. High Flyer is friend of the stream. Good guy. Um, that's one of the best like English voices in the world. So uh, <laughs> we'll send you guys off to that. I'm. Senior Doom, as always, joining me tonight again was Mike Bianca. Mike, anything you want to say real quick before we leave? Let's make sure Lugia does not actually win on Friday. Please. Sounds good to me. All right. I'll be sending you guys off very shortly.